dear friends and colleagues, as the last of our colleagues are taking their seats, um, it is my greatest pleasure to introduce our special guest and our keynote lecturer, um, Senor Santiago Calatrava. Um, without doubt, Santiago Calatrava is one of the most eminent architect, artist, engineers of our time. Um, he was born and raised in Valencia in Spain, where he also completed his architecture studies at the uh, Escuela Tecnica Superior de la Arquitectura. He was then, it was then 1975, already a graduated architect, when he came to Zurich to actually take up studies of civil engineering at the ETH. And I may say lucky us, he stayed in Zurich. It was also here in Zurich where he met his wife, Robertina, who was a law student at the time and is now an integral part of his undertakings. He graduated from the ETH in 1981 with a thesis on the Faltbarkeit von Fachwerken, so the foldability of timber frame construction. I thought that was a very interesting topic in Switzerland to graduate on. At the same year, he opened his first office here in Zurich and took on the first small engineering projects. Some of them can also still be found in Zurich and the surroundings. At the same time, he was participating in architectural competitions. And in 1983, his design and construction of the new Stadelhofen train station here in Zurich, very well known to everyone here, won the competition. The Stadelhofen train station still today is one of the architectural landmarks in this beautiful town. In 1984, his first bridge, the Bac de Roda Bridge in Barcelona, also known as the Calatrava Bridge for the locals, was built and established his international reputation, particularly for bridge building. Many more outstanding bridges and civil engineering projects followed in the next decades. World exhibition in Sevilla, in Bilbao, in Toronto, and in Lisbon. And in 2004, his first project in the United States followed, which was the additional building of the Milwaukee Art Museum. That one just celebrated his 20th anniversary. I think one of his probably most renowned artworks currently is his work at the Ground Zero, the world, New World Trade Center Transportation Hub, also known as Oculus in Manhattan, New York. Most remarkably, Santiago Calatrava is also an outstanding artist and painter as well as sculptor, with many internationally acclaimed exhibitions of his artworks all over the world. He holds over 20 honorary doctor titles and is, interestingly, member of the Papal Council for the Culture at the Vatican. I am, we are deeply honored to welcome Santiago Calatrava here at the Gastro Centrum at the Hirslanden Clinic today. And I would like to thank you, Santiago, from my heart for accepting our invitation and for telling us about the art of building bridges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I asked me how I should start uh, this uh, talk uh, in order to convince you that uh, my profession has something to do with medicine, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, so I found uh, two passages. I want to be very brief and two quotations. One is out of a great artist, Michelangelo, who say, l'architettura dipende delle membra dell'uomo, who means architecture depends on the human limbs. And it's clear, you know, for example, imagine if this is a piece of architecture, it has the right height related to my body. And also uh, the seat has also the right height related to my body. So there is uh, something immanent in ourselves who transcends in architecture through the measure, the proportion, the high, the width, etc. More transcendental, I found also another quotation. Um, um, 
It is in the Gospel of John, the Christ is in the temple and say, destruct this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. Then the people say, are you crazy? It took 46 years to build that, you know, you want to build it in three days. And then John say, the, the temple he was quotating was his body. From this moment on, a revolution appears in the architecture and the churches with cross forms appear. And the proportion of the body goes up, and no more the pure geometry, but also out of the proportion of the body, the height, the pose, the composition of facade, all of that related to the human body. Now, that saying, you know, I want to start with <coughs> a, a series of projects, and what I want to sensibilize you is how architecture can also, or engineering, can transform our everyday life, isn't it? For this, I chose not only bridges, but also complex in which uh, bridges plays an important role. Then bridges are, together with railway stations, one of the most active generators of cities. Uh, you know, imagine for a moment Paris without bridges, you know, it will be another city, isn't it? Or even Paris with less beautiful bridges, they are extraordinary. It will be also another city. This is, you see here, you see an auditorium, you see also a hill uh, uh, with plants who are growing and then some swimming pools. All of that was the, the, the back house, or let's say the back corner of the city of Santa Cruz de Tenerife, 110,000 inhabitant, uh, 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 inhabitants. And then you see the hill down below. This was the, uh, the hill of the ro uh, uh, waste of the city during two generations. We uh, has covered it with earth, secured it uh, towards the ocean, and then plant a palmetum on top of it. Now it's a park. Then you see also there is an oil refinery. And in the area of the oil refinery, uh, we project also a road passing through. And then there is the new Congress Centrum and also the new Opera House plus uh, the swimming pool. And today is becoming one of the most livable areas in the city. From the poorest and forgotten part of it is becoming or is effectively one of the referential points in the city. This is the auditorium you are seeing for a city with, uh, uh, it's also an opera house, isn't it? With one, uh, a little bit more than 100,000 inhabitants, they like really music, I tell you. Otherwise, they will not <laughs> build something like that. <laughs> Here, another case, this is the city of the arts and science in my hometown, Valencia. I work here more than 25 years in, in this project. They are long-term project. There are two new bridges, you see it there. And then there is also an opera house. Uh, um, there is also a museum. There is a planetarium, an arboretum, an oceanarium, and then a place called the Agora. This was also one of the forgotten areas of the city with the gardens. There was the polluted uh, river, you see, no more in, uh, I mean, uh, uh, and uh, we have done all these kind of interventions who brought to these buildings here. Then you see one of the important links we have done, <coughs> El Puente de Hermanos Maristas is called. The houses you see around, they are news. And then here, uh, reflecting uh, in the pool, the bridge, and then you see in the very back the second one, El Puente de Serrería. You see it here also. And then here you see the uh, three of the five, uh, uh, let's say, buildings of the compound. Then this is a, another example. Uh, we have built in Rio de Janeiro the Museo da Mañá for a foundation called Roberto Marino. They, uh, I mean, important foundation for cultural uh, initiatives in Brazil. And then you see there is this road called Sopra Elevada, something comparable will be here in Zurich, the Steel Hochstrasse. Here, uh, you see, in the uh, foundational part of, uh, of uh, Rio, uh, this uh, highway brought a lot of insecurity and also dividing the area in two parts, isn't it? And also making um, a rather insecure part of the city. And we suggest that 
eventually they could think about, you know, removing uh, the viaduct, what they have done. So <laughs> <laughs> and then, consequence of it, you know, new plazas, new, uh, new boulevard, a tramway, and a more civic uh, area. So it's not only doing bridges, sometimes it's also taking them away. <laughs> it's also very important. And here uh, you see uh, uh, today uh, the Museo da Mañá, which it is also a paradox because it's the museum of tomorrow. All, all the museums are of the past. This here is also the director is, is not is somebody who was working in the CERN here in Geneva. You know, he's a scientist, and he became a director of the Museum da Mañá. And you see the people queuing. Is the eventually the most visited uh, cultural facility in um, then uh, also another case of a museum in a, also in a special area in an American city, Milwaukee. Tiny, very cultivated city. The museum has eventually the best uh, uh, German expressionism collection in uh, the United States and also eventually also outside Germany because many immigrants came out of Germany and installed in, uh, in Milwaukee. You see uh, there, the, the, this is also an extension only. It's the extension, the white part is an extension, plus the gardens we have projected together with Dan Kelly, extraordinary landscape architect, American landscape architect, and change also enormous much the physiognomy, adding to the museum of Eliel and Ero Saarinen, and <coughs> who was done the first, um, uh, in reality was the war memorial, who became later museum. Uh, also, you see here uh, the gardens and uh, the position in the lake shore. Then you see here the roof close and the roof can open. Uh, it should be open only once a day, but it opens every second hour or every hour because people love making selfies, you see, <laughs> with, <laughs> with the roof. <laughs> this is the interior and this is the back uh, view of uh, also, is an addition of uh, elements, and as you see, there is a bridge there linking it with the Wisconsin Avenue, isn't it? Which is the axis of, of, of the place. And then, <coughs> also, you see, it's interesting to see working in no man's land, isn't it? No man's land uh, between Orlando and Tampa, there is a place called uh, Lakeland. And the, in Florida, they want to do a, polytechn a polytechnic uh <coughs> who should be not. <coughs> so active, like uh, let's say Georgia Tech or MIT or Caltech, you see, towards the electronic, but very much towards the medicine, biology, and sport medicine, and so on. And this is uh, the, the, the master plan with all the land around, even with a, uh, an station. And you see, this is the education building, very unconventional. Uh, there is, uh, you see, the, the education happens in open spaces. People are teaching uh, here something, there something, and people can see each other. There is also the assistance of the teachers are very open. They are, of course, labs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and is growing very successfully. Then it's also a completely autonomous building. The roof is uh, not only protecting from the enormous winds and hurricanes, the glazed part, but also it can move and orient it, uh, itself um, towards the sun. Then another aspect is this, as I say, not only bridges, but also railway station. Professor Mertens say uh, that my first station was here in Zurich, it's true. I also collaborate, thanks the architect of the station in Lausanne, uh, in, no, in Lucerne, in the main hall, at, at the entry hall. Um, thanks <coughs> Peter Baumann, who is the architect, and he was generous and let me, in my very beginning, you know, to, do, uh, to go ahead. Uh, in uh, knowing what is building for railways. This is in regional Emilia. I built three bridges and uh, then also the railway station. You are seeing here, the, uh, uh, of course, the high speed has revolution and create a lot of stations. In this case, the station is just a linear uh, intervention where the trains enter on one side, goes on the other side through. And uh, this is the in this very flat landscape of uh, of La Pianura Padana um, fits, in my opinion, uh, I mean, fits. Uh, this is the second one I built. This is uh, Lyon Saint Exupéry Aeroport Station. It's a, in a way also a bridge, isn't it? Because it's linking, uh, we have had to build three connections plus uh, an elevated gallery to connect with the airport and let pass the traffic. And in the opposite direction, they are uh, the trains passing through. 
You see, this is the roof, which should be in the flat area of Santolas, a kind of sign of the existing airport also in the background. Here, a frontal view. And then uh, another uh, station uh, who <coughs> is almost a non-station because it's open like a bus station. And I say it's open because it takes sometimes more time to arrive, for example, from uh, home to the station than when you take the TGV and go to uh, Brussels. It's just, or, or maybe Aachen or uh, Cologne, Frankfurt is the north-south line in, in Europe, isn't it? From Germany to <coughs> Brussels and then to Paris or uh, Amsterdam or to London. <coughs> and here you see it in the landscape with the bridge to access it. We have built also, of course, a bridge to come out of the highway, go to the parking and enter in the station. So the multimodal function of stations are very important. And for this, of course, bridges are very important. And this is the station itself. Has an span of 200 meters. I wanted that a train has a space in there without no, no special uh, obstacle. Yes. Uh, here you see it also. And then another view, another. And now an artist uh, has uh, decorated for one year, isn't it? And uh, it's a joy also to see another uh, uh, person who goes and interpret uh, the whole thing and the filtering. And uh, I mean, everybody is very happy, even myself, you know, of the intervention because it shows also the generosity of the conception and also the flexibility, isn't it? <coughs> you see it here. <coughs> here and this is the opening you see the city has 170,000 inhabitants and 70,000 was there when we opened the station so it shows uh, uh, the people are very enthusiastic about that isn't it? and here uh, another railway station in a uh, memorable place and also a significant place you see here mm, uh, the enormous towers built all around and then the tiny station down below isn't it Tiny is not, it's 60 meters high, but the towers are 500 meters. So there is also a kind of link between the persons and the tower. So the towers, the scale of the wonderful invention of the skyline can only be appreciated if you go to Queens or if you go to Brooklyn. And from there you have this wonderful view of the skyline, which in my opinion is one of the greatest art uh, uh, inventions of the 20th century, isn't it? And among them, the American cities or Canadians or so are the best exponents. But uh, the station has a function, among other things, is to create this link, isn't it? To humanize, to bring it to the human scale that I uh, spoke before. And here, you see also another uh, interesting part of the station is that if the water in the memorial, the memorial fantastic uh, uh, piece of art, isn't it, is falling in, falling the station the opposite it falls up when i present the project and i was lucky you know to be chosen i said this station is dedicated to those guys and uh, i show kids that we photograph in a kindergarten and they say those they don't know anything what happens here around you see uh, i mean just six months after the uh, uh, after the tragedy and indeed it it has this sense of hope and and looking forward uh, towards the future and then here also another particularity of the station, it is my, com uh, my, my client is the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Working with the Port Authority is working 70,000 employees, is like working with the Army Corps of Marines. They are civil servants. You cannot invite them even to a coffee oh. because it costs more than one dollar, I cannot accept it. <laughs> or things like that, you know, it's really tremendous. The, the man who, who conduit the project it was a miraculized person. It means he 18 years has been working every day in one of the towers, coming at 7.30 or something like that, because he came from New Jersey. This day, the schools in New Jersey opened, and his eldest son asked him to come to the opening of a ceremony of, of the year. And he could so, uh, see in television what it will happen, because 85 was there and 85 passed away. So I understood, and if there is a merit, is to understand that that these people, they wanted to, 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 del uh, to, to deliver uh, something uh, in remember of the past people, you see? And then you see the roof can be closed or can be open. And then you can see the sky of New York. 
And then the sun enters in and delivers a way of light. Now, if you go there every 11th of September at 9.28 in the morning, the, the strip is in the center, is when the second tower collapsed and they was all dead. So in a way, without uh, writing or, or try, uh, making using big sentences, the building itself can embody you know, the fact of this, what it happens, and uh, with the time, of course, uh, also be readable, as when you go, for example, to Vesle, uh, the 14th of August at noon, the light of all the windows are in line in the center of the church, or this was uh, eventually the 12th century or something like that. It's a Romanesque church. Here, uh, kids and people in the ground looking up to the station. Here some details of the roof. It has been done with a lot of care. This is the entry to the train. People means it's a train station. It's much more because there are also three subway stations, and there is also the reconstruction of all the podiums of all the towers, you know, who cost altogether almost four billion, 3.9 billion. But the station is around 700 million, of course. Just that this is also the memorial and the station behind. And then look at the circle there. This is also the project we are concluding those days. And it is, you can see it here, and the, <coughs> and the right hand side, or your, uh, on your side, your left hand side, you can see the Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, we have been also working more than 10 years because they have paid with fundraising and it costs always, you know, to find uh, 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 money, you see, to continue working it. It is uh, a light. Uh, because it's done with Penteli marble, but we cut it so thin and glaze it so that the light from inside can also merge outside. Here, uh, building urban links. Now we are coming to the real subject, to are the, uh, the, the bridges. This is an, uh, an historical city, Jerusalem. And uh, this bridge is linking the Yafo Street, who goes into the Damascus Gate, into the Theodor Herzl Avenue uh, for uh, where the parliament and all the Knesset and the ministeriums are. This is a view. Very difficult job because I didn't want to put two pylons and in the middle there is obliquely in the underground a highway, so no possibility to, to put uh, um, support. So it was necessary to do the bridge in the curb and also to put eccentric the pylon to cap the center of gravity of the forces and bring it back into the... And then also, if you look uh, on the one and the other side, they are historical cities, and I didn't want to put any uh, historical houses. I didn't want to put any pile on there. You see it here also. These are <coughs> houses who are more than 100 years old. But you see also the bridge in the curb, also here. <coughs> then uh, also in Israel, uh, another bridge in bringing to the hospital uh, and to the oncologic, Davidov Oncologic Center. It's just uh, some of the sketches I have done for this bridge, I give it to the, to the uh, children department of the uh, oncologic. I am uh, extremely proud about that. You know? <laughs> I mean about the sketches, you know, <laughs> because they are serving for a good proposal. And this is the bridge, who is very tiny. You see, it's almost touching in one point. It's a pedestrian bridge uh, with three links going direct into the hospital. Here also. <coughs> then this uh, bridge in a landscape. This is now in California, in Redding. Very beautiful landscape. This is the Sacramento River. And there is a barrage up above. So being a barrage, uh, the, the salmons, uh, the Pacific salmon, they cannot go to pond up in the mountains, and they pond in this area. So uh, they say me the bridge has, uh, has to, uh, to, to have no shadow. So we put no support and no shadow, so we put a glass paving on top of it. And this is also a, a view of the bridge. It's called Sundale uh, Bridge, because you see the shadow is oriented north-south, and can uh, the, the hours of the day can be uh, uh, recognized through the shadow of the ridge, so the solstice, the equinox, and, and all of that. Also, it has a kind of a hole from which you can see the mast, and then people can go close to the water. The water is because the barrage always at the same level, more or less, 
and then also activity can be done on the feet of the bridge. Just that you understand a bridge can be much more than just a link. This is the Peace Bridge in Calgary, also a difficult job because you see there is an heliport and the helicopters are arriving through the river and the water is a wild river. The water can almost touch the, the, the bridge, you see, by floods. And uh, so the only way to solve the problem was to do a tubular structure because also no support was allowed in the uh, riverbed. Then you see it here. This, this is uh, both are pedestrian bridges. And you see it here in the night. Then uh, uh, another, uh, this is the another, um, another bridge in Bilbao. It's also, I mean, I, I could explain you one or two things about the engineering of the bridge. It's a very light bridge. It doesn't deliver torsions at the end, and so it's more uh, technical. It's not, I mean, uh, it has, um, it's a, a bridge in the middle of the city. I call it the spaghetti bridge because it's really, the, the arc is very exiguous, you know, it's almost like a tiny spaghetti. This is a view from down below. And then here also in a very beautiful landscape in the northern of Spain, looking to the, uh, um, uh, uh, to the Gulf of Vizcaya uh, and, and the sea, the Atlantic, in the, in the harbor, we have done this uh, bridge uh, to go from the road into the, <coughs> into the harbor. Here you see it also. Also well executed, you see the steps and the use of the local stone. Uh, here you see pedestrians on one side. There was a time in which I was interested uh, uh, experiencing, you know, the fact of why the arcs has to be symmetric or asymmetric, exploring also like our bones, you know, the torsional uh, stiffness of, you know, the femur and tibia peroné, they, they are all whole. They have also, because they are, have torsional stiffness, isn't it? And torsional stiffness, very little use in bridges, but I explore and use it at the most because once you put the arc on one side and the traffic and pedestrians on the other side, you are using the torsion. But the torsion in a bridge and in, in a regular beam is maximal in the support when the bending moment is maximal in the middle. For those who are specialists in traumatology, they maybe <laughs> can understand me. So it is. <laughs> Also, engineering depends very much on the human body, isn't it? <laughs> Here, a view of, uh, this is over the River Loire, very beautiful, a wild river. The, the landscape down below is continuously changing. Then this is essentially a uh, so very daring uh, bridge done for the Expo in Sevilla. So it was uh, um, a little bit the people surprised there is no back tide of the bridge, you know? So the weight of the pylon is capable, you know, to compensate the weight of the light deck. Uh, um, then, uh, I mean, the high is around 140 meters, and the inclination of the mast is also precise, like the uh, Cheops pyramid. So I chose, you know, the face of the Cheops pyramid like that, like a triangle, and then the high of it is the bridge. So. I mean, nobody knows, and it doesn't disturb, but, <laughs> you know, it's a little bit, I say always, if you ask an architect, was an architect or an engineer who has built the pyramids, then the architect will say, was an architect. And the cathedral was also architect. Then you ask an engineer, did engineers build the pyramids? No. no. And did the, the, uh, the architects build the, uh, engineers build the cathedrals? No, it did, you know, there was only engineers. Without engineering knowledge, impossible to build those things. See, sometimes the position of the, uh, the anteposition or contraposition of the two professions is just subjective. In the fact, both uh, serve the art of building and in a univoc way, isn't it? Here, another is in my hometown in Valencia over a subway station. It was also interesting uh, against uh, an inclined arc because we have had to build the bridge up uh, on one side. Once the station was finished, we pushed the bridge uh, on top of it. This is the, uh, the, the station down, down below. <coughs> then uh, this was uh, uh, another case close to Hippold in, in Amsterdam, uh, close to the airport. They are building a satellite city. It's called Harlem and Mer. And then we built three bridges. You can see one close to the other. Now houses are growing all the way around. And we took the same family of bridges. These are 
um, cable stair bridges, uh, no more arc bridges, cable stair bridges, you know, in a roundabout, but also we took advantage that people can circulate around, they can sit, and uh, then this is also another case of bridge. There are two bridges crossing each other. One is a flyover, and the other is a regular bridge, and you see it here in the night with the reflex in the, <coughs> the uh, pond, uh, exploring a little bit the beauty of uh, the pure uh, use of technique. You see, no decoration yet. I think the next step is to decorate also the bridges, like the Pont Alexandre III in Paris, or maybe Castello di Sant'Angelo, the Ponte di Sant'Angelo, or in Prague, putting a sculpture, and so I think it is something not, uh, still to come. This is also for the development of the harbor area of uh, Dublin. I built two bridges. One is dedicated to James Joyce, and this is Samuel Beckett. I show you only the Samuel Beckett because more related to development. Many of the houses you see, the Opera House and all of that, didn't exist at the time we built the bridge. And then you see here, the bridge is also a swing bridge because this is part of the harbor and packboats can pass through. Then you see it here open and close. It's the biggest of uh, its art. This is the, ah, this is the gym. I thought it was not part of it. In the, uh, almost, you know, close to the Trinity College and uh, to, uh, the, there is a black house who is part of a roman of uh, uh, James Joyce. And this is the bridge we have done more in the center of Dublin. Here. Then uh, this is a bridge in uh, Buenos Aires, uh, also uh, uh, is in La Avenida de Corrientes, linking to Puerto Madero. Puerto Madero, as the names say, uh, it was the harbor for uh, wooden goods, isn't it, out of or coming to Argentina. And uh, the, uh, in the corner uh, was the Casa Rosada, so it's a very central part of the city. We also built a swing bridge. This is only pedestrian, but also formally an interesting case of uh, swing bridge because the harbor still is in use. And here you see it also with uh, the boats around here in the night. Then uh, in Dallas, uh, you see, for those who knows Dallas, there is the, the Trinity River who divides the less developed part of the city from the city itself, isn't it? And the, the, city, the, the river was a kind of corridor just for uh, for ele electrical uh, lines and, and things like that. It was just a, a utility corridor. And then we proposed uh, m doing a park in the area together with, of course, other people, landscape architects and all of that. And we have been uh, uh, building two bridges. This is one of them, is Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge. And uh, here you see it from another point of view and here from with the city in the background. And the other is Margaret McDermott Bridge. You see it here, very close, like I say, to the symbols of the city of Dallas and permitting uh, an enormous development of the other side and also making from the river the center, the riverbed, the center of uh, the, uh, the city, isn't it? I mean, as a park. And then this is uh, here uh, in Switzerland, in Egl uh, over the Rhine River in Eglisau. Eglisau is a very beautiful uh, village, you see, with a very uh, strong Middle Age character who has the servitude of uh, having the passage of all the traffic from Zurich to Schaffhausen, isn't it? And this is part of the Umfarum Strasse uh, of uh, we have done um, taking a lot of care of the landscape, tunneling the major part of the passage, but showing the bridge uh, in the Rhine River uh, as a bridge, a bit in the tradition of. Uh, the uh, Swiss uh, bridging type of like the Salgina Tobel for those who are familiar with Shears and Robert Maillard. Uh, sees it follows a little bit this school. Here, however, is done in steel and concrete. This is the, um, also I am fre frequenting uh, uh, Qatar has many years and I have seen the enormous development and this is a project to come after the World Championship is concluding the Ring Road of Qatar. Then think about an endoscopic 
uh, travel into the bridge in this movie, you see, <laughs> entering into the tunnels, coming out and coming in. <laughs> There are three bridges and 13 kilometers of tunnel. Also, we took care of all what has to do with, uh, with uh, the, the ecological equilibrium of the bay. They are in the reality two bays. One is the Corniche, the first one, and the upper one brings into Katara. This bridge is elliptical because we are very close to the airport. But at the other side, we have to let a big span and a certain clearance for small packboats. Uh, the biggest one, we have done a, canal, uh, a navigation channel. Then there is a tunnel. In the reality, there are two, one, uh, each one in one direction. Then there is a crossing with a wire. Why? So one goes direct into the so-called diplomatic area, and the other continues into Katara. And this, uh, the, the, the crossing situation allows us to do a kind of small island with amenities and also make of this island a destination. Then this is an arc bridge. We try to have as little supports in the bay as possible, but here it was necessary to do the island because uh, 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 there is a crossing and this can be only done in uh, uh, under open air, uh, uh, not by dredging and then uh, immersing the crossing, but you have to build it for. Then the island is accessible through a cable car, and there is also a pedestrian bridge. This is the cable car. We design also specifically the cabins for it, And you see they are uh, going over the pedestrian bridge. Then they go up into the top of the arc. So that you get a view of the whole area, a little bit like the London Rail, but here integrated in the arc. And then arrives into the station. This is the pedestrian bridge. It's a little bit the model of Calgary, just longer, even did, uh, just longer and more. Then continues also over the main bridge, the arc bridge, and it can be open, as you see here. So in the night, you can see the double space on top of it. Then there is a harbor, a small marina with a diving school, a sailing school, etc., etc., and a small shop, souvenirs, and all of that. restaurants and gardens. And then interesting is uh, we have built on top, uh, at the end, a, a religious building, a mosque. Or, uh, this is uh, what you will see now. Masjid is yes, and it's like a rock. It's also in the water. It's also supported in the tunnel down below, isn't it? Indeed, I found it makes sense. To, to do a religious building uh, because indeed it's a link. It's, uh, we are linking parts of the city. Uh, for those who understand Italian, you know, uh, to, to create a link is uh, creare un legame, legame, uh, uh, or relegare, is bo uh, creating boundaries. And this is what religion means, you know, relegare, legare, and 
and so it makes uh, since it's uh, such an important uh, link for the city it makes uh, uh, it makes a lot of sense to have something like that on top of uh, the lower construction. Thank you very much for, for your attention. And uh, uh, it was a pleasure and an honor for me to speak to, uh, to you, in, uh, uh, given your profession and, and that I respect enormous much. My mother wanted me to be a doctor. <laughs> it's true. Uh, so, so was my brother, isn't it? So I mean, it's not that it's something. So with all my respect, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>